Hello hockey fans and welcome back to another video. Earlier this season, some of you might remember that I made a video highlighting 10 former NHL players who had been dominating the Continental Hockey League during its first month of play. Well, it might surprise you to find out that it's already been nearly half a year since that video went out. Gah, time flies, eh folks? During this time, the 2021 KHL season continued to go about its day-to-day -day business without any notable issues or stoppages of play until it reached its eventual conclusion on February 27th. Given that every franchise has played all 60 games of their regular season, and given that the top 16 teams are now battling it out in the Gagarin Cup playoffs, I figured that it was worth making an updated version of this list now that the season is over, in order to see how many players were able to stick around from the previous list, as well as highlight some newer entries who secured their place amongst the league's elite by the end of the year. So in today's video, join me as I take you through my list of 10 former NHLers who dominated the KHL this season. Before we begin, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes to help you explore new skills, deepen existing passions, or get lost in creativity. Skillshare has thousands of online classes in a wide variety of topics such as graphic design, creative writing, photography, and so much more. My personal favourite has been the Learn Premiere Pro and edit a how-to video for beginners in their film and video topic, as I've been wanting to learn some new editing tricks in order to make my video stand out from the crowd that little bit more, and it's great that I can simply log on, find a class in the exact topic that I need, and learn from someone who clearly knows what they're talking about. Not only that, there are no ads anywhere on Skillshare's platform, and they are always launching new premium classes. So you'll never have to watch a commercial mid-class, and you can instead focus on learning the most up-to-date information in your chosen field. If joining a community like this sounds like your cup of tea, boy do I have just the deal for you. The first 1,000 people who click the link in the description or the pinned comment of this video will get access to two weeks of Skillshare's premium membership for free. That way you can try before you buy, and maybe even learn something new along the way. So if you're interested in picking up a new skill, taking a talent to the next level, or getting lost in all things creativity, click the link in the description or the pinned comment down below, and enjoy a two-week free trial to Skillshare's premium membership on me. You're welcome, folks. Skillshare. Explore your creativity. But anyway, back to the video. Kicking things off at number 10, we have Chris Weidman. The first and only defenseman to feature on this list, Chris Weidman was able to keep up his strong early season performance and finish the year as one of the best blue liners in the KHL. A fourth round selection by the Ottawa Senators during the 2009 draft, Weidman would take to the ice in 181 NHL games over four seasons split between the Senators, the Edmonton Oilers and the Florida Panthers, scoring 16 goals and 45 points for his efforts. Having spent the recent 2019-20 season solely in the AHL, and with North American hockey placed on an extended pause earlier this season, the American defenseman decided to try his luck across the pond, as he joined KHL side Torpedo Nizhny Novgorod for the 2021 season. From there, Weidman would join Torpedo's roster, and waste little time getting comfortable with his new team. Despite racking up 73 penalty minutes over the course of the season, the 31-year-old would flex his point-scoring muscles all season long and finish the year with 9 goals and 41 points in 59 KHL games. These numbers might not seem that impressive on the surface, but when you realise that Weidman finished the year as the highest scoring blue liner across the entire KHL, it's safe to say that his debut year in the league went pretty well. With Torpedo securing the 8th seed in the Eastern Conference, Weidman will also get his first taste of the KHL playoffs as Novgorod look to clinch their first Gagarin Cup championship in franchise history. Given that his contract expires at the end of the year, and he is coming off his most productive season in over half a decade, the reigning Defenseman of the Year has a pretty big decision to make. Either he returns to North America, re-signs with Torpedo for the foreseeable future, or he takes his talents elsewhere in the league. Which one will he end up choosing? I guess we'll have to wait and see. 
Next up at number nine, we have Oscar Lindbergh. The first of six new entries on this list, Oscar Lindbergh didn't take long to make a strong first impression in Russia. A second round pick by the Phoenix Coyotes in 2010, Lindbergh would suit up in parts of five seasons in the NHL, split between the New York Rangers, the Vegas Golden Knights, and the Ottawa Senators, scoring 39 goals and 79 points in 252 games. After a 20-game stint with the Senators to conclude the 18-19 season, the Swedish forward would take his talents overseas for the first time in six years and spend the 2019-20 season with E.V. Zug of the Swiss National League. After scoring 30 points in 46 games and being named the league's most penalised player with 91 penalty minutes, the former second-round pick decided to move elsewhere, as he signed a one-year deal with Dynamo Moscow for the 2021 season. Once he had made the move to Moscow, Lindbergh wasted little time becoming one of the team's more productive players. Despite once again spending much of the year in the sin bin, thanks to racking up 80 penalty minutes this year, the 29-year-old went on to score 11 goals and 36 points in 44 regular season games, good enough for fourth on the team in scoring, even though he missed 17 games of the season. Similarly to Weidman, Lindbergh will also be suiting up in the Gagarin Cup playoffs for the first time, after Dynamo clinched the third seed in the Western Conference. Depending on his performance over the coming weeks, I wouldn't be surprised to see the Swedes sign an extension with Moscow in order to remain with the team for a little longer. If they decide not to re-sign him though, Lindbergh's productive performance should be more than enough to earn him another contract elsewhere in the league. As long as he tries to stay away from the penalty box next year, he should be just fine. Moving on to number 8, we have Rob Klinkhammer. The only player on this list to have won a Gagarin Cup championship, Rob Klinkhammer played noticeably less games than anyone else in this video, but that didn't stop him from putting up one hell of a season. An undrafted player in each of his years of eligibility, Klinkhammer would spend the next half a decade of his career split between the WHL and the AHL before making his NHL debut with the Chicago Blackhawks during the 10-11 NHL season. From there, the Canadian forward would go on to spend parts of six seasons in the league, split between five different teams, where he scored 22 goals and 43 points in 193 NHL games. Following a 14-game stint with the Edmonton Oilers during the 15-16 season, Klinkhammer headed straight for the KHL as he joined Belarusian side Dinamo Minsk for the 16-17 season. In fact, the undrafted forward has spent the last five years of his career playing solely in the league, where he has suited up for three different organisations, notched 141 points in 228 KHL games, and even scored the championship-clinching goal for Akbar's Kazan as they lifted the 2018 Gagarin Cup. After spending the 2019-20 season with Avangard Omsk, Klinkhammer decided to return to one of his former teams by signing a one-year deal with Dinamo Minsk. Having rejoined the franchise he began his KHL career with half a decade ago, the 34-year-old wouldn't take long to make an impact both on the ice and in the locker room. Though he would find himself out of the lineup for half of the regular season, the newly named captain of the roster would go on to score 15 goals and 26 points in just 31 games. This might not seem that impressive on the surface, but considering he scored 27 points in 44 games last season, 24 in 57 the year before, and 22 in 49 the year before that, he was able to outscore two of his previous three seasons in a fraction of the games played. Since he produced the best points per game average in the last four years of his career, and given that his contract is set to expire once the offseason arrives, I wouldn't be surprised if Minsk offered Klinkhammer another deal so he could stick around for the foreseeable future. After all, he certainly knows how to lead by example both on and off the ice. At the seventh spot on this list, we have Nigel Dawes. Both the oldest and the longest tenured KHL player on this list, Nigel Dawes may be approaching the latter years of his career, but he shows no signs of slowing down any time soon. A fifth round pick by the New York Rangers all the way back in 2003, Dawes would take to the ice in 212 NHL games over five seasons split between five different teams, where he scored 39 goals and 84 points in the process. 
After a four-game stint with the Montreal Canadiens during the 10-11 NHL season, the Canadian forward would spend the rest of the year in the AHL before taking his talents to Kazakhstan as he joined Baris Astana for the 11-12 season. Since then, Dawes has spent the last decade of his career exclusively in the KHL, where he has forged himself a legacy as one of the best players the league has ever seen. Playing predominantly for Barris, along with a pair of seasons with Avto Mobilist, the six-time All-Star registered seven consecutive seasons with 49 points or more, en route to scoring 243 goals and 462 points in 495 KHL games between 2011 and 2020. Oh, and he also won the Top Goalscorer Award once, and was the league's highest scoring foreign-born player twice, so it's safe to say he made himself right at home. This season though, Dawes decided to join his third KHL team in the last four seasons, as he signed a one-year contract with league juggernaut Akbar's Kazan. Though his production would see a slight drop compared to his dominance of years past, the 36-year-old certainly didn't disappoint, as he finished the 2021 season with 23 goals and 43 points in 47 games, good enough for second place in scoring on the roster by a huge margin. With Kazan securing the top seed in the Eastern Conference, and with his career as a pro hockey player well into its latter stages, Dawes is hoping that he can finally get his hands on his first Gagarin Cup championship before he calls it quits. No matter how the postseason turns out though, provided he isn't ready to hang up his skates just yet, Dawes will likely have a number of KHL teams lining up to sign him once the offseason arrives. After all, it's not every day that a player of Dawes' calibre, experience, and consistently strong production goes on to the open market, is it folks? Next up at number 6, we have Reed Boucher. The third entry on this list to have played in his first KHL season, Reed Boucher certainly didn't look like a rookie on the box score. A fourth round pick during the 2011 draft by the New Jersey Devils, Boucher would go on to play parts of six seasons in the NHL, split between the Devils, the Nashville Predators and the Vancouver Canucks, scoring 20 goals and 42 points in 133 games for his efforts. Following a single game stint with the Canucks during the 18-19 season, the American forward would spend the rest of that year, as well as the following season in the AHL with the Utica Comets, before the virus situation in North America prompted him to head overseas for the current season, where he signed a one-year contract with KHL side Avangard Omsk. Though he had moved across the pond for the first time in his career, Boucher certainly didn't look out of place. The 27-year-old would continue his high-scoring play from the AHL and go on to register 24 goals and 48 points in 51 games, making him the top scorer on Avangard's roster. With Avangard clinching the second seed in the Eastern Conference, Boucher becomes the next name on this list who will be getting his first taste of the Gagarin Cup playoffs over the next few days. With his contract expiring at the end of the postseason, and with his solid scoring numbers on both sides of the pond, Boucher will have to decide whether he wants to remain in the KHL next year, or whether he decides to return home and pick up right where he left off in the minors instead. Regardless of the choice he makes, I'm sure that Avangard would be happy to have him back at some point in the future. I mean, he was their top scorer after all. Halfway through this list now, at number 5, we have Shane Prince. A familiar face in the league for the last few years, Shane Prince used his previous experience in the KHL to produce his best season yet. A second round pick by the Ottawa Senators in 2011, Prince would take to the ice in 128 NHL games, split over four seasons between the Senators and the New York Islanders, where he scored 12 goals and 38 points in the process. After a 14-game stint with the Islanders during the 17-18 season, the American forward would move to the Swiss National League in order to suit up for HC Davos for the start of the 18-19 season, but after 16 games with the team, he would join the KHL Sabir Nova Sibirsk for the rest of the year. From there, Prince would take his talents to Belarus for the following year as he signed a two-year contract with Dinamo Minsk, where he was able to keep up his production from his half-season prior by potting 29 points in 55 games with the team. 
Prince returned to Dinamo for his sophomore year with the team during the 2021 KHL season, and though he was expected to continue his previous scoring pace, he was able to take his game to a completely different level. In fact, the 28-year-old would produce his best scoring numbers since 2015 by notching 25 goals and 49 points in 52 regular season games. If that wasn't enough though, he was also able to improve his plus-minus rating from a minus 26 to a plus 14. So not only had he scored 20 more points in three less games played compared to the year prior, he had also seen his plus-minus rating rise by a whopping 40 points. Oh, and he was the highest scoring player on Dinamo's roster too, just in case you needed something else to be impressed over. As Minsk were able to secure the 7th seed in the Western Conference, Prince will finally get to suit up in the KHL playoffs and try to lead his team to a Gagarin Cup championship over the next few weeks. That said, Dinamo have never made it past the first round since joining the league back in 2008, so if their track record is anything to go by, I wouldn't expect them to stick around for too long. Given that his two-year contract is set to expire at the end of the postseason, and considering he saw vast improvement in every facet of his game, I wouldn't be surprised to see Dinamo offer him another deal so he can stick around for the next year or two. If the two parties instead decide to go their separate ways though, expect Prince to be snatched up by another KHL team pretty soon after. He certainly earned it, folks. Next, at number four, we have Ryan Spooner. The first entry on this list to have scored at over a point per game pace, Ryan Spooner may have missed nearly half of the regular season, but that didn't stop him from finishing as one of the league's most productive players. A second round pick in the 2010 draft by the Boston Bruins, Spooner spent parts of seven seasons in the NHL split between four different teams, where he scored 48 goals and 167 points in 325 games. After spending the 18-19 season playing for three different NHL teams, the Canadian forward made the move overseas and joined Belarusian side Dinamo Minsk for the 2019-20 season, where he made a great first impression by notching 10 goals and 37 points in 43 games. Spooner returned to Dinamo's roster for the 2021 season, and though he would find himself out of the lineup for an extended period of time, he would somehow produce even greater numbers than the year prior. Despite missing 24 games over the course of the season, the 29-year-old scored 6 goals and 39 points in just 36 games, good enough for second on the team in scoring, only behind the previous entry on this list. If that wasn't impressive enough though, he was also able to improve his plus minus stat from minus 31 to just minus 1. So not only did he score two more points in seven less games and miss nearly half the season of play, he massively improved his overall performance at both ends of the ice. Spooner will also be getting his first taste of the Gagarin Cup playoffs over the next few days, as Minsk returned to the postseason for the first time since 2017. Whether they make it past the first round is a different matter of course, but given his consistent production over the last two years, Spooner will likely garner plenty of interest across the league once his contract expires at the end of the year. Who knows, perhaps his play will have caught the attention of a team in North America, and maybe he returns to the NHL for another stint in the bigs. Crazier things have happened, you know. At the third spot on this list, we have Yuri Laterra. Sitting at the exact same spot in this video as he did nearly half a year ago, Yuri Laterra was able to rebound in a big way during his sixth season in the league. A third round pick by the St. Louis Blues in 2008, Laterra would take to the ice in 307 NHL games split between the Blues and the Philadelphia Flyers, scoring 34 goals and 111 points for his efforts. Following a 23 game stint with the Flyers during the 18-19 season in which he scored just 3 points, Laterra returned to the KHL for the first time in half a decade and joined SKA St. Petersburg for the 2019-20 season. After scoring 30 points in 51 games with the team, the Finnish forward moved elsewhere in the league as he signed a one-year deal with Spartak Moscow for the 2021 season. Having joined his fourth KHL team, Laterra would quickly rediscover his high-scoring play from years past and become a key point producer on Spartak's roster. 
In fact, the 33-year-old would finish the year as the team's highest point scorer, thanks to notching 9 goals and 44 points in just 41 regular season games. Not only are these numbers a notable improvement compared to the year prior, they were also his best single season output since 2015 and his best performance in the KHL since 2014. Yeah, I think he had a pretty good year for himself, don't you? With Spartak punching their ticket to the playoffs with the 8th seed in the Western Conference, Letera will need to take his game to the next level if he wants to go on a deep postseason run, especially since they will be up against CSKA Moscow in the first round, who were crowned the best team in the regular season thanks to a 43-12-5 record. Whether he will be able to lead his team to a championship remains to be seen, of course, but given that he was one of a handful of players to score at over a point-per-game pace this season, and considering his contract is set to expire in a few weeks, Letera has done more than enough to earn another deal in the league, whether that be with Spartak or someone else. Whoever gets him to put pen to paper will be pretty happy with themselves, that's for sure. Penultimately, at number two, we have Marcus Granlund. The number one player on my previous list, Marcus Granlund may have dropped a spot this time around, but he still produced one hell of a debut season in the KHL. A second round draft pick by the Calgary Flames in 2011, Granlund took to the ice in 335 NHL games over parts of seven seasons split between the Flames, the Vancouver Canucks and the Edmonton Oilers, scoring 58 goals and 101 points in that span. Having last suited up in the NHL with Edmonton just before the 2019-20 season was put on pause, the Finnish forward decided to return to Europe for the first time in seven years and try his luck in Russia, as he signed a two-year contract with Salavat Yuleyev of the KHL. Over the course of the season, Granlund would not only become one of Salavat's most productive players, he would cement a reputation as one of the best players in the entire league. Once the 2021 season had concluded, the 27-year-old had scored 23 goals and 53 points in 50 regular season games, good enough for 8th place in scoring across the entire KHL, despite playing noticeably less games than all the players above and below him in the rankings. With his debut season in the K having been a resounding success, and with Salavat securing the fourth seed in the Eastern Conference, Granlund will be looking to keep up his high-scoring production during his first trip to the Gagarin Cup playoffs. Given that he has another year on his contract once the postseason is over, both the player and the organisation should continue to reap the rewards of this partnership for the foreseeable future. I mean, I don't see him slowing down anytime soon, do you? Before we reach the top spot on this list, I would like to give out a few honourable mentions to Vadim Shipachov, Timu Hartakainen, and Brendan Manel, all of whom have only played brief stints in the NHL, but all finished the KHL season standing head and shoulders above the competition. Shipachov's 20 goals and 66 points in just 57 games led the entire league in assists and points, Hartakainen's 28 goals and 64 points in just 53 games put him second in scoring, while also setting a new league record for the most points scored by a Finnish player during a single KHL season, while Manel's 5 goals and 38 points in 47 games ranked him as the second highest scorer amongst defencemen, despite him being only 23 years old. The KHL sure has some talented hockey players, eh folks? And finally, at number one, we have Dimitri Yaskin. Climbing up five entries since the previous video, Dimitri Yaskin tops our list, having firmly cemented himself as one of the KHL's best players. A second round pick by the St. Louis Blues in 2011, Yaskin took to the ice in 303 NHL games over seven seasons split between the Blues and the Washington Capitals, scoring 27 goals and 69 points in that span. After a lone year in Washington during the 1819 season, the Russian Czech forward decided to return much closer to home for the following year as he signed a one-year contract with the KHL's Dynamo Moscow. From there, Yaskin would produce quite the debut year in the nation's capital by scoring 31 goals and 63 points in just 58 games, good enough for second place in league scoring, only behind his fellow linemate and honourable mention of this list, Vadim Shipachov. 
Now some of you might remember that in the previous video, I mentioned how I was expecting Yaskin to finish the year pretty high in the league scoring race, given his track record and him scoring 5 points in his first 6 games of the season. That said, I didn't expect him to do this well. By the end of the 2021 season, Dmitry Yaskin had scored 38 goals and 60 points in 59 games, good enough for 4th place in point scoring across the entire league. Though he may have produced 3 less points in one more game compared to the year prior, Yaskin's 38 goals was more than any other player in the league by a sizeable margin, and it even set a new Dynamo franchise record for the most goals scored in a regular season, surpassing the previous record of 36 set by Alexander Moltsev back in 1971. Breaking a 50 year old record sure sounds like a successful season to me folks. Having once again finished the year as one of the top players in the league, and with his two year contract set to expire once the playoffs are complete, I fully expect that Moscow will do everything in their power to keep Yaskin around for the foreseeable future. Given that he has just been crowned the KHL's best goalscorer, set a new franchise record, and shows no signs of slowing down from his over point per game pace anytime soon, I would be surprised to see Yaskin wearing anything other than a blue Dynamo jersey once the 21-22 season rolls around. That said, the team better be getting ready to open up their wallet, because the forward has earned himself one hell of a payday. And that was a look at 10 former NHLers who dominated the KHL this season. What do you guys think about my list? Were you surprised to see that some of these entries had played so well this year, or did I leave someone completely obvious out? Let me know in the comments below, I would love to hear what you guys think. But thank you very much for watching guys, I hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye! A big thank you to Carl Fairbank, Chris Gadsby, Connor B, Drew Fawcett, Houston NG, Jordan Whitehead, Saturn Otaku, The Legacy, Tom from Finland, Twin Sanity Dad and Worthless Pieces for helping support this video via Patreon. If you too want to help support the channel a little bit further and get a shout out at the end of every future video, make sure you head over to patreon.com slash oddmanrush and become a patron today.